What's up, what's going on guys, Geek on the field today, I'm going to be reviewing the Wonder Woman 1984 movie, I've literally just got finished watching it, um, and so, if um, I'm going to be looking at my phone, I will, I will bring it up, like this, um, I will be looking at my phone, but that's because I've got like notes here, yeah, my phone's f literally fucked, but you're thinking, how can you see with that shit, how can you even use it, well, the thing is, I can, but it's very difficult. But so I don't care. But yeah, let's get into the Wonder Woman 1984 review. And so, right, so the start, if you remember, like the first Wonder Woman, it kind of. This is a spoiler, spoiler by the way. This is a spoiler review. Um, if you've seen the previous Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot in, um, you would know that kind of the first start. Like, kind of, it kind of was a, it started with the Amazons, I think, if I remember rightly. And it kind of did the same with this one. It went into a backstory, kind of, um, not a backstory, but kind of a, a bit more of a backstory. I, I'm calling, I'm going to call it a backstory, but it kind of did a uh, flashback, that's the word I'm looking for. It kind of did, a, a, did, of a, a, did another flashback to where Diana being a kid and they did that in the um the first Wonder Woman movie so it was kind of good to see that uh thing kept up because you can see you can definitely see that the range of um you can definitely see the similarities between the previous Wonder Woman and this Wonder Woman 1984 movie you can most definitely see the um similarities um I personally saw it straight away uh, like as soon as the movie started i was like oh okay this movie's picked up at the start and is pretty much very similar to the um, previous one and i like that i like that range where they kind of connected the first one to the this one uh yeah so i like that a lot so if you don't know um i will bring it up now I will bring it up in a second. I'll bring it up now. So, if you remember Stranger Things, um, the mall that they're in, um, it was one fight scene where uh, Wonder Woman was kind of looking down uh, from above, uh, from literally above, and it was kind of like it went into this mall where uh, kind of went bird's eye view. And if you do remember that point, what they were, they were using in the Wonder Woman 1984 was actually. A little Easter egg to Stranger Things, and if I can find the thing, I'll find it for you. I'll find the little image for you. So this is what I mean. Literally, um, this mall is actually is actually the same mall that is in Stranger Things. You probably do recognize it. I recognized it immediately, and I recognized it being mentioned at some point. Like I remember watching it in Thingy. It's like this is kind of this. And I guess, yeah. Fans spot suspect scenery in the Wonder Woman 1984. You can see the thing. It's literally built pretty much exactly the same. You can see it. Literally, it's almost identical, pretty much. It's literally, it's literally the same, just different colours, pretty much. But yeah, it's nice to see that. Nice to see that little Easter egg there. That's pretty much the only Easter egg I caught, but it's really sick. So with this one, I'm gonna talk about the Black Gold Cooperative, and the Black Gold Co Cooperative is a company that Maxwell Lord owns, and Maxwell Lord is a I don't know, he is a rich asshole. He's literally a rich asshole. Like any rich asshole, you're gonna is gonna you know is gonna be a dick or some sort of villain within this, and yeah, Maxwell Lord, I he was actually in Supergirl. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail with Supergirl because um yeah it's not the first time that that um something like this with Supergirl and Wonder Woman slightly connected because I know in one tease adverse the actor of Supergirl um actually um wore the actress of Supergirl actually wore Wonder Woman's boots um, I don't know if she was playing as Supergirl, but I, she actually wore Wonder Woman's boots. And um, 
Maxwell Lord being a Wonder Woman and being in Supergirl is good. So I just wanted to point that out that that was actually cool, but going off topic a little bit. The um, company that Maxwell Lord owns is an oil company. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily goes into and fits his character, but that's just my opinion. I know that is to do with the comics, so I'm, I'm mainly glad that, that the stick is so true to uh, his character, but I just don't think Maxwell Lord, even in the comics, is suited for a fucking oil company. It just felt weird for me, but yeah. Um, so the first time we actually, so at the start, like mainly throughout the start of the movie, um, fucking Wonder Woman was not seen. She was not seen at all. Uh, you mainly, if she fa uh, literally used a lasso and pulled people across, she mainly did that. Uh, or she ran across quickly that you couldn't see her. Uh, she literally was very stealthy, if you will, and you couldn't really see her at all. It was only within the um, mall fight scene, um, uh, the mall Easter egg that I showed you, within that mall, uh, there was a fight scene, and it was only then when you actually get to see her, and which is shit, but it's pretty much... It's pretty much good to see. Um, Wonder Air, uh, it was f a fucking great entrance. She lit literally jumped up, like jumped up from the balcony bit because there's like a little balcony where people look down and you can see people walking around and shit. She literally jumped up that and then landed in, in front of the person because she was chasing after like these two guys, uh, maybe three. I can't remember what they were doing. Those guys confused me. The most out of every one of the characters in this movie. Those three guys really confused me. I don't know what they were on about. But mainly thing, main thing is that Wonder Woman's entrance was absolutely amazing. I'm telling you now. Um, so we didn't get to see this in um, one in the previous Wonder Woman in the first Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot. Um, so. What one of uh, Wonder Woman's iconic looks? Uh, say, uh, the, I say, I'd say that actually the most iconic look on Wonder Woman is literally her tiara type thing. Um, it was a whole. F I'm pretty sure it was a. It was a, a terraria. Her terraria, bro. That's a fucking game. <laughs> her tiara. Why can't I say it? Her tiara was a big thing. In the um, previous Wonder Woman, they literally made it out to, to to be a thing. So I can I can't remember what they did, but I'm pretty sure they did make the tiara slight thing. Uh, they showed her putting it on or something like that, which kind of made it a thing. But I'd say yeah, t the tiara on Wonder Woman is a big thing. But the fact that they had Wonder Woman use it as a weapon. That's just... I don't know what to say. It's just the fact that they used Wonder Woman's tiara as a weapon. Is Right, so by a weapon, I mean she literally fucking lobbed it and used... Yeah, you know what I mean. Just she lobbed it and fucking at someone. I think it was at the. I think it was at someone. I'm very dumb at remembering things. That's why I've literally got a load of notes on him on my phone. But yeah, they pretty much used. So I was just like, I was like confused. Like I was questioning. I was like, I was like kind of questioning myself a little. Uh, like, I was asking questions, not questioning myself, I was asking questions. So I was just like, do you, what, is this, it's like she threw it, so I was just like, I was like, is it a new weapon or something? Like, what, what's this supposed to mean? It's like, it was actually sick. Um, so I noticed that at the start of the movie, um, the civilians don't really know much about her. I gathered the wood do, but it seemed like they didn't 
really know much about Wonder Woman. I thought they would do, but they didn't. And so, yeah, that happened. Um, I don't really know what to say about that, but you'd think that with Diana and I like, saving everyone, you'd think that a lot of people would know about her. But then again, um, she practically, she's lived for quite a while. She's lived for, like, ages. She's literally lived for ages. Since and the, the, I think the time span between the previous Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman ninety four is quite big. Um, I'm not too sure how big, but I'm pretty sure it's got quite big. Um, so Diana. So in the first movie, um, spoiler out again, like this whole movie uh, reviews a spoiler. Um, so in the previous movie, in the start, um. Diana seems lonely, and that's because in the previous movie, uh, well, in Wonder Woman 94, Diana seems lonely. In the previous movie, um, that's because she lost Trevor, Steve Trevor, who, to her, she thought was her love of her life, I guess you could say. Like, Diana really, really liked her, um, liked him. And Steve, I'm going to call him Trevor, Steve Trevor, he died from a plane crash at the very end of the movie. And it, he he was seen in trailers and stuff, but um, people thought people thought that Steve was a back, was Steve was a, um, um, Steve was just going to be in flashbacks or, uh, Wonder Woman was hallucinating Diana. Wonder Woman, aka Diana, was hallucinating. But yeah, but the star Diana just seemed lonely, and that's because you know Trevor was Steve. Trevor was fucking you know he he died in the previous movie, and so I'm gonna talk about Barbara. So Barbara is the villainous cheater. I'm gonna go more into cheater and later on in the review, but. Barbara didn't really seem like she was cheater at first. She didn't really seem um she didn't you you wouldn't be, if you wasn't a geek and you just loved superhero if you just loved watching the movies and you wasn't really a geek, you wouldn't really expect Barbara to become some villainous person as such. Um, I don't think you would do anyway. Um, but obviously she does. And yeah. Uh, I just, I, I literally asked, like, I asked fucking, you, why would, why would you, like, is that on purpose? Like, would you, is that on purpose for you to make it so that Barbara isn't expected to become villainous? I know that's a thing, but like, the geeks, you know Barbara will become some villainous, so you're just waiting it for it to happen. But for the actual viewers, I, I ain't a geek, then Barbara, you won't know if she becomes a villain. Um, so I guess in some ways being a geek kind of spoils the movie, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It is what it is. Uh, there's some perks and there's some downfalls to shit. So, um, there was a part when Wonder Woman was in her apartment house apartment thing. She was she was just in her living space space, and it kind of looked over a watch that Steve Trevor uh, Steve Trevor's watch, and the way they did it was just like kind of a sense of mystery. And they did it twice actually. They kind it kind of hovered over um, Steve Trevor's old watch and kind of did this like mysterious sound effect. And it literally gave me a sense of mystery, and they did that twice within the movie. So, if if you haven't seen the trailers, then that would definitely, quite definitely, give you a sense that something will happen with him. If you haven't seen the trailers, if you haven't literally seen the movie at all, um, then I don't know why you'd be watching this spoiler review, but yeah. Um, 
yeah, it just gives a sense of mystery around uh, Trevor, that and you know that something would happen with him. Um, so I noticed, uh, so a lot of movies do this actually. When someone, a girl specifically, a woman, is on her own in the dark and something bad's about to happen, no sound and no music is being played. A lot of movies do that. Um, I like it, and I don't. But it's just the fact that all movies do it, and it's just a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like that. Fifty-fifty. Um, I think that they focused on like kind of building a relationship between Diana and Barbara, and by that friendship. I don't mean literally intimate fucking relationship, I literally mean friendship. And I think that they did it because they wanted to have like a build up for their fight, in a sense. Uh, their cheater and fucking Wonder Woman fight. I think they did that mainly because of that. Um, for no particular reason. Literally, building relationship between... Um, uh, blah, 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 Diana and Barbara. The only reason why they did that is because I think that he was just building it up. That fight, um, there was no really other reason. I know she wonder Diana saved Barbara, but yeah, that's kind of a way. Um, and right, so Maxwell Lord um, was given a sense of villainous and music. Um, Again, if you didn't know, he, if you didn't know, if you don't, not, if you're not a geek and you just watch the movies and shit, then you won't really know Maxwell Lord is a villain, is a villain, you'd only see him as a villain if you watch the Supergirl thing, and you could sense his villainous when, like, a low pitch music tone thing, music thing came on, you could definitely sense he was a, a villainous type person. And it did give off that vibe, which is very, very good. Um, so, it was weird. So, um, I will talk about more of this. Um, um, this is something, I'm going to say something after this that's going to add on to it. So, listen. Um, well, not straight after, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so... Building relationship with Maxwell and Barbara. Um, so the only reason they got close together was because Barbara had the stone. Um, I can't. I don't know the actual name of it in the comics, but I just called it a wishing stone or something like that. Um, yeah, the only reason why uh, Maxwell kind of wanted to get close to Barbara was because Barbara had the stone. Barbara had the wishing stone, and Maxwell wanted it and at that point you didn't really know why he wanted it i feel like without the movie you, throughout the movie you don't really know why he wanted it um i still don't particularly know yes he wants to be the number one person and you could see that's what that's what his wish was um but yeah guess that's why he wanted it just to be the number one person and in a sense he did but yeah diana doesn't trust Ma diana didn't really trust maxwell from the fucking start of even meeting her meeting him diana didn't really trust maxwell he just maxwell lord he just she just gave him a dirty look when um maxwell went off from talking to Bar from talking to barbara um You see, I, f I can't remember what it is actually, but at one point you see a bit of sympathy for Max Lord. Um, yeah, that's good to see. But for a geek, you don't really want to sympathise with a villainous role when you know he's going to become a villain at some point. So it was hard to sympathise for Max Lord, even though you did sympathise sympathy with him, sympathise with him. So that's good. So a bit of sympathy there. Um, Steve in a different body. Um, I didn't really catch why he 
he was in a different body. They didn't really... I don't know why he was in a different body, but he was. Um, so, this question will actually be answered further on, but I thought to myself, where is Steve being? Is he real? And, I'm and that question will be... Will be Ha, did get answered throughout the movie and I will mention and I will m mention it um that's all Lord and Wishstone so basically when Maxwell Maxwell made his wish he kind of they merged in a sense which is it's okay but it it's weird. I don't know. Barbara Gain and Cheater abilities. So, I didn't really see the wish. I didn't really catch the wish. But Barbara actually made a wish to become more like Diana. And because I didn't catch it, I thought she was just gaining Cheater abilities. And then I thought, well, she hasn't had an accident. So, how is she gaining some abilities? But that's what... But, um, yeah, they did later on say that in the, uh, later on down the movie say that Barbara fucking wished to be more like Diana and it became more you know better she she didn't she got more, more than she expected by saying to be more like Diana because obviously she's a Wonder Woman um and then that's kind of where I started getting the sense of that will Will Barbara and Maxwell work together? And they actually did. They ended up fucking becoming uh, working together at some point, in a sense. Um, Maxwell's just like, don't you lay a finger on her? And then he went off. And then Barbara ended up going into a co helicopter with her after that. I'm not going to say anything after that, but I will get into it uh, at some point. Um. That's when I started getting suspicions. After that was when I, um, when I thought, well, Barbara and Maxwell were together. That after that, that's when I started getting suspicions of Trevor, Steve Trevor. And the first suspicion I thought was, is Trevor connected to the stone? Which, I'm right. Unfortunately, I'm right. He was. You can guess it. Diana teaching Trevor, nineteen eighty four, and. So obviously Trevor died, Steve Trevor died in the previous movie, so he didn't know what was going on, everything was misty, he was kind of a freak out. He wasn't really freaking out, which is what I was kind of expecting, but um, you'd think someone would freak out at the fact that everything's new, literally everything around you is new. So like, imagine if this, like, this, if you're watching, whatever you're watching on, imagine if th what that is, is you have never seen it ever before. You've not seen it before. Um, like everything around you you've not seen before that was basically what Steve would be feeling you'd freak out pretty much wouldn't you and I thought he'd freak out but he didn't so um, Diana did teach Trevor all that stuff what everything is within 1984 um, but everyone seemed to suddenly like Barbara bringing bringing yeah, everyone seems to like uh, like seemed like like liking Barbara. Um, that didn't make sense, but I, I liked it because obviously I, I didn't mind. I liked. I actually liked Barbara's character, so I, I wanted her to be okay. But obviously, I knew she was going to be a cheater at some point. Um, with the way they explained the wishing stone, I thought that they were going to have. Do uh, have multiple objects and then, like bring them together and create some super fucking object weapon or some shit, but they didn't. So, you know, not a bad thing, but as far as like what I thought when watching. Um, so one of Wonder Woman's known big and I mean big things is her invisible jet, is invisible jet, and so she finally got it. She finally got it. After, in the previous movie, people fucking wanting it and begging for it. People hoping for it. In this movie, she finally got it. And I was so happy. Oh, I was so happy. And when they was in the, that... Because, like, she made a jet invisible. And I pretty much it became her invisible jet, in a sense. And I hope we see in the next one, if there is going to be a next one. Uh, there was a... Uh, there should be. 
but actually there should be a fucking another Wonder Woman movie because of the end credit scene and I'll get into that. Uh, but when those flying through in the invisible jet, uh, those were a romantic scenery for Trevor and Diana flying through fireworks and above the clouds, which was good to see. It was kind of beautiful, like literally the fire seeing the fireworks flying through. It was kind of beautiful and flying above the clouds, was just moist. Love to see it. Um, there was a scene where Barbara got like really angry and kind of started kicking this guy around and. But that was kind of a sense of me thinking, is Barbara turning evil? I like to see it because I like fucking that's character development now. I loved it. Um, Wonder Woman catches a bullet with Lasso and this is where this things get dicey as hell and I love it. Um, so, for basically what was happening was... Um, they were chasing Maxwell Lord down. Like Maxwell Lord down was in like in this like truck car vehicle thing, and there was a load of vehicles behind it, and there was a bullet that got shot, and nearly hit fucking. It nearly fucking hit Steve Trevor who was in the car right behind them. So literally, one door and like literally got the lasso and went, and then catched the bullet. Loved that little scene. That was actually sick. Um, and then that's where something got brought up so the god of lies duke of deception um i've no idea who that guy is but he got brought up or something um let me know down in the comments below just stuff to do with him um yeah the god of lies duke of deception um i thought that fucking i know maxwell lord wouldn't and i'm glad they didn't do it now thinking about it but I thought Maxwell Lord would become this god of lies, this duke of deception, but they didn't. He didn't, so, but thinking about it now, I'm glad. Maxwell Lord actually, because Maxwell Lord almost, like, pretty much infused, like, got infused himself with these wishing stone, I'm going to call it. Um, He kind of started to go crazy. He pretty much started to go crazy, and I was, I was literally freaked out. Like, that was sick. I, I was actually kind of freaked out by his fucking... Portrayal lights, shout out props to the actor, but yeah. Um, and then you find out, um, so there was this character called Asteria, 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 um, Asteria. So you find out this, this character has been mentioned, I will talk about it more, um, maybe. Asteria was actually mentioned, was actually mentioned when, um, with this armour, so, one woman's talking to Steve Trevor about something, and she mentions Asteria and this armor, this golden armor. Literally, the armor in the thumbnail is what Asteria, uh, Asteria's armor was. This golden armor, so fucking moist. So Asteria got mentioned, and she was one of the little sister. I'm gonna say sisters, Amazonian sisters. Uh, she would um, grow up with Diana, grow up with, and then. Obviously, you later found out that granting that fucking it seemed like uh, Maxwell Lord granting wishes actually took takes energy away from him. So, in almost, I was expecting some sort of Diana finding that out and then using that as a weakness, but that didn't happen. Um, I don't know what this was about, but they mentioned something called the Star Wars program. I thought knows what that is. Maybe it's a reference. Maybe it isn't. But yeah, first fight between Barbara and Wonder Woman. So obviously, Diana was once unexpectedly seeing Barbara, and um, it was just it wasn't Cheetah Barbara. It's just Barbara, and they had a fight. Um, it was good. It was it was a good first fight to be honest. Because obviously, all first fights are going to be short, quick, snappy. First fight between Barbara and Wonder Woman is pretty decent, to say the least. Barbara, you then find out because of, um, and obviously, because Barbara made this wish of wanting to be like Diana, Barbara actually had the same abilities as her, and I'm pretty sure within the movie, if you wish, uh, they said if you wish something, you can't wish for something else, uh, or something like that, and then... Trevor said something, like, I'm already gone, so I was like, what? Did he already know he was dead? Like, did he know he was fake? 
So that kind of literally answered my question. Trevor, all this time was not real. He was fake. So I was like, boy, 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 boy. Why? Why? I was... <sighs> all this time Trevor was fake. I'm already gone. And did Trevor know he wasn't real? I'm pretty sure... It, I felt like Trevor knew he wasn't real. That's the thing. I have... Part of me thinks he did that. Um, and then the way Baba described... Right, so this is what kind of meant things like I'm pretty sure that's what Lord said. Uh, something to do with um, one of the facts of making a wish. You can't make another. But, and then that's what Lord said. Oh, um, I make the wishes. I can do whatever with them. And so Baba was able to make another wish of some sort. So um, Barbara said Barbara wanted to become an apex predator. And then I thought. Is that a hint towards her becoming cheater? I think so. Yes. Anyway. Uh, Wonder Woman with new armour. Asterias. So, yes. Wonder Woman ended up getting the gold armour. As you see in the thumbnail. And that is Asteria's armour. I'm pretty sure. It looked sick in fight scenes. Like she had like this little winged shield around her. She could spit. Oh my god. It was fucking sick. I love the armour. And then Barbara became Cheetah. I didn't really like the fan look of... I wasn't really a fan of Cheetah's look. I was a bit 50-50. I can't fucking talk. I was a bit 50-50 with Cheetah's look. It was good though. I liked it. Didn't seem like much of a fight with Wonder Woman and Cheetah though. Um, when they had their very last fight between each other. Literally they pretty much had two fights. Literally two fights throughout the whole movie. And the very last one wasn't even much of a fight for a final fight. So I was a little... I didn't like it. Um, everyone renounced their wishes because, like, Wonder Woman was kind of... Wonder Woman, bear in mind at that point, like, had her lasso around Max, Maxwell Lord and was able to speak to everyone. Don't know how he did it, but Maxwell Lord was standing on something. He went in the middle and standing on something. And Gal, uh, Gal, Gal, Diana fucking put the lasso around his legs and kind of spoke to everyone doing it that way. And got everyone to and did the speech and got everyone to renounce their wishes and shit like that. And um, at that point, Barbara was no longer cheater. Um, which I liked because I kind of liked the way Barbara was before she was cheater more than her being cheater. And I really didn't like the look of cheater, so I fucking glad I honestly didn't have her being cheater. Um, a slight sympathy again for Maxwell Lord with his son, so I kind of like the dynamic. Like you can go back to the start to the end. You had the Maxwell, you had sympathy of Maxwell Lord at the start, and you have sympathy of him again at the end with his son. So I really like that. And I did see the end credit scene. And here's the thing. Here's the thing about the end credit scene. So hysteria. Let's talk about hysteria. So you know how hysteria was mentioned, and now one woman kind of used her armor. Well. She was the end scene credit. She showed up. And my guys, guess who played Hysteria? Um, the person that played Hysteria was Linda Carter, who was the original fucking Wonder Woman. She literally, Linda Carter was the original Wonder Woman that naturally played the inalien president in Supergirl as well. So that's another thing towards Supergirl. But the main thing is that Linda Carter played the original Wonder Woman. She was in Wonder Woman 1984. I fucking loved it. He's playing Hysteria. So it makes me want to watch. I hope this is the second one. And this is my review. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And to the person. And if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.